Hi folks, it's Switchback. It is every hiker's worst nightmare. You don't know where you are, you don't know where to find the trail, and you don't know where to find anything familiar to get your bearings. So what do you do? First thing, stop. Stop, think, observe, and plan. Stop where you are, don't keep moving, stay still, and stay calm. Panicking will work against you. Think, try to retrace your steps. Or is there anything around you, any landmarks that you recognize? Or are there any that you should be seeing where you are? Don't take any steps until there's actually a reason. Observe. If you're on a trail, stay on that trail. It's what got you where you are. You will also be more likely to come across people and it will be easier for search and rescue to find you if you're on a trail. If you're unsure if you're on a trail and sometimes it isn't super duper clear, then look for signs of human work. So cut logs, stone steps, any kind of posts, of course trail markers, anything like that. Even if you're not on a trail, being near a trail will still make it easier for search and rescue to find you. If you must walk, then use your compass to get a bearing. Never just walk aimlessly. As a very last resort, you can follow a drainage or stream downhill. This can often lead to a road or a trail, but it can also be an incredibly dangerous strategy. Thick vegetation, sheer drop-offs, and other challenging terrain tend to be around water areas, not to mention of course the risk of the water itself. So this is far from ideal. Plan. Based on the previous steps, put forth a plan. If you are not super incredibly confident about your route, stay put. If you're exhausted, if it's getting dark, stay put. Don't let confidence or your ego work against you. For even an experienced hiker, it can be easy to think that your best way is to get try to find your way out. It is rare for this to be the wise route unless you have a map, a compass, and very good navigation skills. Try to call 911. If any service provider has service where you are, it will go through. You can even try texting them. The Compass app on your phone will provide you with GPS coordinates. If you don't have any cell signal and 911 calls will not go through, then put your phone on airplane mode in order to conserve battery. Be loud both audibly and visually. Carry a whistle. Three short blasts is a universal SOS call basically. And if you do this, then listen for rescue crews to blow whistles back. Bright clothing and bright gear will make it easier for rescue crews to find you. If a helicopter is looking for you, try to get to a clearing and lay down like a snow angel to make yourself appear as large as possible. If you have anything bright, like a sleeping pad, a space blanket, a tent fly, anything like that that can make it even easier for you to spot you, put it out. You wanna be as eye-catching as possible. If you're at a high point, then use a signal mirror pointed at the horizon. Use your headlamp as a signal, or you can consider building a signal fire, but these have caused wildfires, and so this is not a go-to strategy. Even if you don't have a way to treat water, it's still better to drink water than to avoid it. Look for smaller and flowing sources if you have options. Most rescues occur within one to two days. And so if you do get Giardia, then you can get treated when you get out. If you do go to get water, then go back to your clearing after that so that you are still visible because there's usually vegetation along waterways and it can make it harder for you to hear rescue crews. Now, if you decide to try to rescue yourself, take frequent breaks before you're exhausted. When you stop to eat, take a break in the shade for 30 minutes. And if you're still exhausted, take another 30 minutes. Keep in mind that your body cannot digest and hike hard at the same time. Drink at least enough water to avoid dehydration. And signs of dehydration can include thirst, dark or concentrated urine, a dry or sticky mouth, infrequent urination, cool, dry skin, muscle cramps, headaches, and feeling run down. Stop and fix small problems while they're small. And this goes for even when you're on <laughs> when you're on track and not lost. Pain, illness, and injuries can all get worse if you try to push through. Try to avoid hiking between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on hot days. Stop and rest in the shade and take a break. 
during those hours. Wait for temps to cool down and slow your pace. Take breaks as needed. Now let's talk about planning ahead so that you set yourself up for success in the event that you do get lost and how to reduce your risk of getting lost. Carry the 10 essentials with you on every hike and I have a video about those up here. Day hikers are less likely to carry all 10 essentials than backpackers are and are actually more likely to require search and rescue services. Check in with the ranger station ahead of time for any road or trail closures, fires, washouts, or any other necessary alerts. You can also give them a heads up of where you're headed. Leave an itinerary with someone before you go, and I again have a video about that up here. You can even consider putting one inside of your car face down in the event that search and rescue needs to get into your car and they can see what your itinerary is, but don't leave it face up. If you're hiking with a group, stay with the group. But if that group does split up, and that's okay, a lot of groups do, but do what we call a slinky hike. And that basically means that when you get to a water crossing, a trail junction, if you're in that first group, you need to wait for the next group to meet you. And you can continue on once the next group gets there from there. But you need to all be connecting and making sure that you're all going the same way and that nobody gets left behind. It's also a good idea to take a picture of the group beforehand, kind of know what everybody has, what everybody's names are, so that if search and rescue asks, you have all that information. Brush up on your navigational skills. And it's a good idea, even if you already have good skills, to keep practicing for them rather than relying on GPS. And if you want to do a brush up or you want to start from scratch, then look at courses that are offered online or at outdoor stores. Take a look at maps of where you're headed ahead of time and look at what the landmarks are. Are there lakes, gullies, peaks, ridge lines, and where are they in relation to where you're going to be? If you're going off trail to go do your business, then take a look back as you're walking away so that you know what things are supposed to look like on the way back to the trail. Look for those milestones, those landmarks. And if you're navigationally challenged, I have a trick up here to help you to keep you from getting lost. Carry a personal locator beacon or satellite messenger. These have an SOS button that can communicate with search and rescue crews. You can also communicate with loved ones back home so that if there is a change of plans, they know not to get worried and you can let them know about what's going on so that they can tell search and rescue crews. And again, you can communicate with them and I have a whole playlist. I'm going to link that right here. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.